Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ian, digital marketing consultant and agency owner. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Facebook's attribution tool. Now, if you're not familiar with Facebook's attribution tool, it was released in 2017, and it allows you to get a better picture of what's going on on all your marketing channels and how your business is actually getting sales online. Now, if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through what Facebook's attribution tool can do for your business, how to get started setting it up, and what the immediate use cases will be for 99% of businesses out there. So if you guys are interested in learning about Facebook's attribution tool, you're going to love this video. All right, here I am on my laptop and going to real quick take a look at Facebook's attribution tool. So if you come to their homepage, you search Facebook's attribution tool, Google search, you're going to get this homepage, which has an amazing explanation of what you would want to use Facebook's attribution tool for. <laughs> they even have a great 15 minute course right here, which looks like this. And it has a bunch of different sections. Uh, I really like the section if you take their 15 minute course on attribution models. This teaches you the main reason that you're going to want to use this attribution tool, which is that Facebook's attribution tool allows you to track users online across devices. So this is different from normal tracking because normal tracking uh, like you would use with Google Analytics is based on a technology that uses cookies to track users across the internet. Problem with this technology is that it's not going to be able to track users as they switch devices from things like a desktop tablet to a mobile phone and then back to a desktop. So if a user you know sees an ad while they're on a desktop and then leaves and checks something on their phone and then comes back to their desktop and makes a purchase, that ad that the person saw is not going to get credit because that user's journey was not tracked across the internet. Instead, what Facebook has done is they have, instead of using this cookie based technology, they use what they call people based tracking, which just uses uh, it has to do with the user IDs individuals have that have Facebook accounts and the ability for those people to be tracked across the internet, you know, due to a number of factors, one of the biggest one would be Facebook pixels that are now all over the internet on all types of web pages. So Facebook is now able to track users uh, across uh, all these different pages, because they're signed into their device with a specific user ID, and Facebook's able to keep track of those people across the internet. So what that looks like in practice, we go down here is they give this great example of what it looks like if you track a user using cookie technology. And they talk about right here, someone seeing a Facebook ad going and looking, uh, clicking over to the, to the website on their desktop device, then clicking over and checking out the same website on a mobile device, checking it out on a tablet, and then coming back to your laptop and making a purchase. And what's happening here is none of those steps are tracked except the initial step from the ad to the first device. All the rest of the steps are not tracked. Facebook's technology allows you to do is track users. You can see right here, all the steps are highlighted from the ad to the first device, second device, third device, fourth device, all the way through to the purchase. And why that's important is because for your ad attribution model, you want to be able to give credit to all the different media channels that got someone to make that purchase. So in this example right here, the first uh, place where someone saw an advertisement was on Facebook, and then they went and saw the uh, website on desktop. Now here, there was an Instagram ad that led the person to go back to the website on their mobile phone. And then there was a display ad that caused the person to go back to the website on a tablet. And then finally, they saw another Facebook ad that got them to go back on their laptop and then make a purchase. And in this case, all those different points along the conversion path are going to be given a certain amount of credit based on the attribution model you're using. What most marketers are using right now is what's called last click attribution, where only the ad that was shown right before the sale, meaning in this case, this one, it would be the Facebook ad that was shown before the person purchased would be given all of the credit for the sale and all these different ads and interactions the person had with different media channels would not be given any credit. So you can see how this is a problem if you're trying to allocate a certain amount of your marketing budget to all these different channels that you're testing. So if you are trying to get a more accurate read on how users are converting, what's the actual conversion path they're taking on your site, you're definitely going to want to use Facebook's attribution tool. And just to make this a little bit more concrete, we're going to go into the tool now and I'm going to show you what it looks like and what it allows you to do. So right here, this is going to be the main dashboard for the tool. And you're going to see up in the left where it says performance. This is the main tool that you're going to use when you, when you come into Facebook's attribution tool. And there's going to be three, four things really that you're going to adjust. The first one is what conversion event you want to look at. So for this business, we're going to look at website purchases. The next one is going to be the time period. So I'm going to say, I want to look at all the website purchases in the last 30 days. You can see there's a drop down with all your normal time periods. Finally, you're going to come in here into the attribution model and you're going to see a couple of really interesting things. So when you click in here, 
you're going to see under attribution model a drop down that gives you all these different models. You can see even credit, last click, last touch, positional, and time decay with two different types each. So we're going to pick our attribution model. Right here, I'm going to leave it on last touch. This is going to be really similar to the read that you're going to get from platforms like Google Analytics that default to this attribution model, uh, last touch. Now, Google Analytics does have some different options for its attribution model, but you have to keep in mind that, again, Google Analytics is going to be using the cookie-based attribution modeling system for tracking users across the internet. This is going to be used using a, what Facebook likes to call a people-based uh, tracking system to feed data into their attribution model. But again, we're gonna start with the same one, last touch, which is uh, the same one that most platforms will default to, and then the window. So this is just for those actions that we're gonna be looking at. So in this case, actions that led to website purchases. We're gonna say, all the actions that led to that, how far back are we gonna take into account prior to the point of sale, any of those actions? So for in this case, we're gonna start with a seven-day click and one-day impression attribution window. This is going to be the same attribution window that Facebook ads will generally default to. And all this means is that if at any point, seven days prior to the sale, someone clicked an ad, that ad will be given a certain amount of credit and added to one of the steps along the pre-purchase path so that you, you can see which you know marketing channels are actually contributing to the sale. So in this case, if uh, you know a person saw an ad eight days before or clicked on an ad, excuse me, eight days before, that would not be given any credit. But if it, they clicked on it seven days before, it would be taken into account as one of the paths that are added into your attribution model. So in this case, if it's last touch, if you know seven days prior to the sale, the only ad someone saw was one of these Facebook ads that they clicked through on and it was seven days before, that would get 100% of the credit. Another example would be is, let's say you have even credit and I'm using a seven day click and a one day impression attribution window. What this would mean is if that I saw one ad and I clicked through on one ad, every single day, seven days prior to the sale, that means each one of those seven ads that I clicked through on would be given an even amount of credit for the sale. So, you know, one seventh of 100%, not gonna do that math in my head, but you guys get the idea. And it's similar with all these different types of attribution models. So if it was, uh, you know, positional 30%, as you can kind of see from the graphic on this, this gives 30% credit to, I believe, uh, all the different touch points in between the first and the last, and it splits up 70% of the credit for the first and the last uh, touch point along the conversion path. Similar where positional 40% gives 40% credit to all the touch points in between the first and the last and assigns 60% credit to the first and the last touch point. So you can see how this can get extremely complicated. You know, adding to this time decay, meaning that as the farther back you go within your attribution window, the less credit an event's gonna get. And then finally, Facebook gives you the option to use their data-driven attribution model, which is a algorithmic, statistically-based model that uses a number of different data points that you know we as the end user are not gonna be able to look at really under the hood what's going on, but it does give you, or it is supposed to give you an even more accurate view uh, over time as Facebook starts to learn about your business and how users should convert. So this data-driven attribution model is especially interesting because that's something that you normally have to pay for on higher end platforms. For example, Google Analytics 360, their very expensive enterprise grade analytics platform, which is extremely expensive. I don't wanna quote something that's uh, totally wrong, but it's an extremely expensive platform. And that uses a data-driven attribution model, similar to the one that you're getting for free here, Facebook's attribution tool. So really interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as, uh, I'm gonna go last, last click or visit uh, right now for the attribution model. And I'm going to go seven day click, one day impression. Just leave it because this is a very common default attribution model and window. I'm going to click apply. And then we're just going to take a look at some of what we're going to see in here for the performance tab on the Facebook attribution tool. So as you can see for this business in the last 30 days, there's 400, 514 of these website purchase events. And you can see the breakdown here from paid, organic, and direct traffic. Uh, right here, you can see the visits. The majority are coming from Google organic search. And then the conversions, the majority are coming from Instagram. In this case, that makes a ton of sense as this is a business based on a few uh, Instagram accounts that have huge followings driving the majority of conversions for this business. You can see here again in the breakdown by channel, uh, you know, source and medium that Instagram is dominating followed by Google organic just like you saw up at the top of that list and then closely followed by Instagram organic and our autoresponder which we're using Flavio in this case and uh, you know it's tracking sales that are coming out of some of those email campaigns that we're sending so this is really interesting because as you come up here and you start to play around with this attribution model you're gonna see some of these numbers for the channels and the relative percentage breakdowns for conversions and visits and they're gonna start to change and in some cases this change is gonna be 
pretty drastic, just depending on you know what model you end up using. So the second part of this Facebook attribution tool that everyone's gonna use is gonna be this conversion pass. Conversion pass is another super important part of this tool because this is where Facebook's people-based tracking really shines in comparison to a cookie-based tracking system. But what you're gonna see here is again, you're gonna have to pick which conversion event you wanna look at. In this case, we're just gonna stick to website purchases, but you can use anything. It could be add to cart, initiate checkouts, it could be a product page view, you know, a multi-time product page view, whatever conversion events you set up in Facebook, it's gonna pull these in and then allow you to analyze what conversion path people are taking prior to that event. So in this case, you're gonna see that our most common path is someone going on our Instagram page or interacting with some of our Instagram posts twice before they then come to the site where they can initiate, uh, you know, a checkout. You can see another one here. The second most popular is just one time. They're gonna interact with one thing on Instagram and then come to our site. Third most popular is a direct entry of the URL. Most likely is gonna be after they've viewed something outside of this attribution window. So in this case, if we're looking at a seven day attribution window, you know, maybe someone clicked on an ad or viewed an ad nine days prior and then they ended up remembering the name because it's a very simple to remember name and then they entered it, uh, entered the URL directly and came to the site. So that's possible. There are some other reasons that we could be getting this high, uh, a percentage of direct uh, conversions attributed to direct traffic. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other reasons that can happen based on how the tracking set up. I'm not gonna get into that here, but overall what I'm looking at makes a lot of sense, especially compared to the conversion path that you're gonna get with something like Google Analytics right out of the box, which takes a lot of tweaking, uh, a lot of troubleshooting to make your data as clean as it is uh, right here out of the box with Facebook attribution tool. So a couple last things about this tool that you're gonna like. First of all, to set it up, you just need a Facebook uh, ads manager, a Facebook pixel setup, and a Facebook business manager. You're gonna pull all the data sources from those three platforms into Facebook's attribution tool and what Facebook calls an event source group, which is just a grouping of your different data sources on Facebook. Now, the next thing that's really amazing about this tool is Facebook has a ton of native integrations with platforms like Google AdWords or now Google Ads. So you can bring in data from your you know, YouTube ads, Google search ads, display ads, get some really amazing data on how those ads are performing based on the conversion paths that Facebook's track. The fact that it integrates that well with a Google product, as well as a number of other you know, ad products is really an amazing part of this platform. So anyway, I don't wanna go into the weeds too much on this platform. This is really just meant to be an overview so you can see some of the really interesting common use cases for Facebook's new attribution tool. But if you are having problems trying to understand what your users are doing online prior to purchase and which conversion paths you should optimize, which channels you should be putting your money into, using this Facebook attribution tool is really gonna make your life a lot easier. It's gonna be super valuable. So I highly suggest you go over to their page, watch their quick 15 minute training program on it, and then go through the installation. Integrating this tool with your non-Facebook ad platforms will take a little bit longer, you know, so set aside maybe an hour or two, but nothing too long. You can get this up and running in about a day, and then you're gonna get some of the highest quality data you can get on any free platform. Actually, I will say the highest quality data you can get on any free platform uh, on the internet right now. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure to comment below and let me know what you'd like to know about the Facebook attribution tool or what other types of topics you'd like me to talk about. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe so that you're notified every time that we come out with another video on data-driven marketing, attribution, analytics, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.